Hey guys, so I'm going to 134 here, bringing you a review of Common Rider Build, episode 25. In this episode, we find out that Isora has gained new abilities thanks to her magic bracelet. And it muttered a mysterious word known as Evolt. While all that's going on, we find out also that there's a traitor among, among Toto's government. That has been leaking information on where the Pandora's box is and what... And ha, and uh, has all been tied to Namba Heavy Industries. Can our heroes protect the Pandora's box? And will we? Will they be able to just do it without losing anyone else? The answer is no, because once again they are. Once again, this show gets a little bit predictable, and Masaru, the last of the Hokuto Three Crows, is killed. Yeah. All right. So let's just let's get out out of the way. Like, I I think this is a good episode, but I. This has been, like, the major flaw, in my opinion, of this arc so far. It's been really predictable, like, that we would lose the last two of the crows before, the before you know, we got too far in, which is kind of frustrating, because I wouldn't have mind them being, like, main, like, characters that were, you know, that could actually, like, you know, protect people and stuff, or, like, or, like, at least be, like, good guy grunt monsters, but no... So yeah, he dies fighting Kamen Rider Rogue to protect the Pandora's box. I mean, admit it was a pretty awesome fight. I mean, he has one of one of the shields from his castle form ripped off, and like, I mean, he tries to fight pretty well, but he, you know, he doesn't he doesn't last. My only other complaint is that like they didn't show him using that big energy beam he uses. But otherwise, you know, like it was a decent fight. Um, you know, we get some decent fights uh, in this. We actually uh, see the heroes actually put up a really good fight against the Hellbros, uh, which was surprising. Like, they actually, like, they basically imply that Sento studied them to, like, figure out ways to, like, battle them better without having to use, like, power-ups or the hazard trigger. So that was cool. Um, I like that. I actually like that because uh, cause Crozzy Charge actually uses... Uh, uses the beat crosser along with the twin uh the twin breaker uh by uh throwing the cross dragon from the twin breaker uh you know to create the dragon energy thing and then using the key the the key full bottle to create like an energy ball that the dragon holds in its mouth to damage one of the hell bros um while grease and uh build you uh fight them off using uh hokuto full bottles and uh grease's power that was actually really cool um and of course, their last fight at the end, um, up until uh, uh, build build hazard uh, rabbit tank hazard goes berserk and almost kills Misora. Although that was really cool because, like, at the end it shows Misora's powers. Um, spoilers if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, causes him to suddenly become instead of rabbit tank rabbit rabbit, which is I think hinting to the I think the 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 full the full full bottles that allow him to go into rabbit rabbit and tank tank. Uh, we haven't seen those yet, but uh, I think that they're hinting that that's going to be coming up pretty soon. Um, but yeah, a lot of this is mostly about, A, this idea that there's a mole, which this is like, what, like the fourth or fifth mole we've had? Um, I actually thought Sawa was going to be the mole again, and it turns out that she's still loyal to Nama Heavy Industries. Um, and of course, uh, Misora's abilities uh, evolving... Uh, at the beginning of the episode, we actually see her um, send uh, uh, Rogue and the Hellbros back over to Sato by opening a hole in the sky wall, which was interesting. Um, we also learned a lot more about how her abilities work. Um, she would uh, basically her powers are based off like her emotions, uh, particularly her anxiety uh, building up, eh, build up. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't mean that pun. I apologize. I'm professional, which is why I always film this in my pajamas. <laughs> um, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, um, and she uh, sees like this, like this war, like this destruction of like a like a city, and it's it's clearly what uh what happened on Mars. If the and uh, at least at least like whatever happened that destroyed the civilization, um. And that that and because she sees that happening, she doesn't want. She wishes and hopes that that won't happen again, which allows her to purify full bottles. 
Uh, Sado more or less hypothesizes that that's actually showing her what would happen if the Pandora's box is opened by, like, evil means. And so her powers are trying to find a way to make sure that the Pandora's box is not abused. Um, well, it does scare her. I do like that she that she decides she's tired of having everyone else fight for her, so she wants to use her powers to protect people. Which is how, which is why at the end when she comes to their rescue, uh, her power allow allows him to pre or uh, uh, prevents uh, Bill from hurt from killing her with the hazard power um, thingy. Yeah. Sorry, I had an itch. Um, I was trying to I was trying to think about what I was doing. Um, yeah, so, like, that was really cool, and I really like that it's uh, definitely a, a lot of building up to um, the fact that Sento's uh, finally finding a way to use the hazard trigger that won't make him dangerous. Um, but, yeah, no, it was a really good episode. Um, probably my favorite part was actually, like, just the little little backstory stuff we got for Namba Heavy Industries. How, like, uh, Gentaku's old uh, secretary... And the Hellbros are were basically brainwashed to become child soldiers for Namba Heavy Industries, and how Namba wants to use them to basically like, you know, take like take over the government and such, and to you know have plans to basically become you know the the number one weapon seller in the in the world, and to use his weapons to create war so that he can always have money. Um, it was actually kind of a really interesting idea, um, even though I like. There's always this thing where they want to make weapon manufacturers look like they're, like, the biggest villains in the world. I'm like, well, which isn't really true, because most weapon manufacturers usually are, like, tech companies that want to, like, that make, usually make their tech more for, like, you know, they have regular tech that they use to for civilian use, but they also have a, a defense department that, you know, the government contracts to to make weapons and other, like, like... Like I've never, I've never like gotten the idea where like they think weapon manufacturers sell their stuff to like insurgents or terrorists so they can make sure wars always happen. Like I, I like don't get me wrong, I get that there's business in war, but like I don't know. I, I just I find I find Nama Heavy Industries to be a little cliche in that regard. Not like in bad because obviously they're not the real the most the important villain. They're clearly like a. Much like Hokuto and Sato, they're just a big another another end to Faust's schemes. Like they try to act like Faust is gone, but I I know Faust will come back, especially since uh, Bloodstock is still active. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot going on. Um, and it was definitely a good episode. I I really liked it. I think that they did a pretty good job, like uh, having like doing little setup pieces for stuff that's going to come later, like, at the end, and, like, just in general how, like, uh, how everything's going to play out and how our heroes will are going to work together more. Um, yeah, it, it, there's not really much to say because it, it, it just kind of was one of the... It, it's one of those episodes where not really a lot feels like it happened but it did like just because like like all the pieces are like little bits that add up to like the next episode in a, in a way um since we're going to get yet another representative battle between Sato and Toto uh this time with uh I think probably all three riders against Rogue and the Hellbros um and also seeing that uh Sento is finally fi trying to find a way to actually keep himself from going out of control which I guess is going to be by using, like, two of the same full bottle? Uh, we'll, we'll probably see how that works, but... Um, it was it was definitely interesting, to say the least. Um, that being said, guys, uh, I'm sorry this is, a, once again, another short one, but I, I don't really have a lot to say. Like, it was a good episode, but there wasn't much... That was super, like, like super amounts of stuff happened. It was mostly just little bits that were just showing, like world building that isn't not that it's not important but it's, it's not like it's something that i can talk a lot about you know i mean there was some interesting fight stuff like i will admit like i loved i loved the the hazard trigger stuff especially because like him like constantly moving and like warping around the field using the power of the hazard trigger was really cool um but otherwise oh that and uh ryuga being uh 
getting a really cool hero moment where he protects me Sora from getting injured by a uh, rogue with uh the nebula steam gun. That was really cool. Um it also kind of shows how much Rogue is kind of a jerk to me, Sora. He really wants to like kill her. Like there have been like like back way back in like the early days of this series, you know, he tried killing her as Night Rogue. That was interesting. Um again when, once again we get Bloodstock talking about how like she's his precious daughter, even though I kinda don't think that's true, but <sighs> mm. I almost I almost believed him, I guess. But yeah, guys, I think that's going to be it. Um, like I said, good episode. I only had really one complaint, and that's just how they had to kill Masaru. They had to kill the, the Kuro Trio. Like, I'm not even mad or upset. Like, I was just like, oh, you're so dead. You're so dead. You're talking about your buddies and how you want to bury them at the Skywall. You're so dead. <laughs> like, like, I ain't even mad. I'm just like, I'm like numb. I'm like, yeah, no, I knew you were going to die. You were dead. There were no, you know, I didn't, I didn't get mad or upset. Uh, you know, I'm sure you, you all know how that is. You've watched something and it's like, oh, you're so dead. You're so dead. You just, you said the dead words. You're dead. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, that's going to wrap it up for this week's uh, comment review. I'm sorry that like my, I only have a really short video and I don't have anything else to do. I, I thought about doing Lupin Ranger versus Pat Ranger, but I'm already behind on that. And I, I just, I don't know. Sentai is weird. I <clears throat> maybe if like when Beast Morphers comes out, maybe I'll start watching the Power Rangers episodes just to try and see if maybe it's any good. Because I know people are really excited for it because they're doing Go Busters, but I I just don't know. I didn't really like Go Busters when it came out, which is weird because I like I remember when that came out, it seemed like nobody liked Go Busters just because. But then again, it came out right after Go Kaiger, and people loved Go Kaiger. I think too a little too much, but. I mean, go, granted, Go Kaiser earned that because it was really good, but I don't know. It could be good, but the fact that, like, just because Hasbro is now making the toys doesn't mean that they're going to get better writers for the show. But anyway, guys, I think that's enough, and the phone's ringing, so I got to do that. So, I don't know. It's, it's nothing important. Never mind. Uh, but anyway, guys, I really am going to go. So I've, I've rambled too long. So until then, guys... Uh, this song gets to 134. Signing off. Take care.